In this video, Ryan's going to be inking Lobo. This is part two of a two-part series. Check out the previous video to see him drawing. I'm going to use a fresh, brand new pen. This I love these pens. I love them because they have like this brush tip, and so it's it's literally like I'm um, painting. Guess where I learned when I was learning how to draw? Guess how I learned how my uh, anatomy? He-Man toys. Okay. You remember? You know how He-Man toys? They're they're really bulky. You see the the arms like. I just, you know, the, you have the, 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 the they're, they're shaped like this. Yeah. You, with the man at arms and He Man and, you know, oh, yeah. all of them. They all had like these bulky arms and all these muscle structures in there and stuff like that. So I used to look at those toys and that's how I learned my anatomy. Literally from He Man, basically. But basically, what I'm doing is this I'm looking, I'm looking at the entire piece. But I'm not just looking at that piece. I'm looking at the the values, the darks and the lights that's in there. So all I'm doing is I'm looking at this value and I'm redrawing that va value in relation to the next value, in relation to the next one, in relation to the next one. And that's how I kind of, I do a patchwork type of, uh, type of approach. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a trick because if I sit here drawing this chains, for, this this is gonna take this is gonna take me forever. So this this is gonna be a trick, right? I mean, watch this crap. I'm stopping to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go. With, I'm just gonna go with blacks like this, right? And this is another thing I like to do is I just like to leave an impression on the outside like this. I'm just gonna make black. Now look how fast I'm going just by doing using this strategy, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna go here. So I'm pretty much done already. Watch, <laughs> you'll see a bit. So from here, um, I'm I'm pretty much eliminating um, most of the hard work. And now you see all the bright areas that's on the sides. That's literally where I'm gonna concentrate. The, the, the chains. If we're just gonna put, so I'm gonna just put in the work on this side over here, and then I'm gonna come back with white and just do some enhancement on the side. Just gonna give some little tiny little highlights of the chains over here, just to kind of make it look like, oh, that's chains, you know. But it's 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 a little trick, man. There, there are little tricks that that you have to do when you're drawing comics. What was something you struggled with while you were learning how to draw? My struggle. Oh, I know what it was. Um. It was laying down the the initial grid for the for the human face and nailing it down consistently. Meaning, um, uh, you have your eyes and which use the back of this pencil. Rest of the page right here. Can you guys see this? Okay. So you you have your eyes over here, your nose, your mouth. Okay. So you create this this triangle here, and you have another one that's right here. So this was some was a formula I never really used, um, I, but I've learned to use this. Like once I have nailed this, these two triangles, everything else is is pretty easy. You just have to finish up the head, the ears, the, the, pretty much that's it. So if I was using this formula uh, in the in the past, um, I think I would I wouldn't have been struggling for it. But the reason why why I was struggling is because. I would draw an eye over here, and then I'm thinking I'm drawing this other eye great, but this eye ends up like way up here at the top. And I'm like, oh, when I was going to eye, the face looks crooked now, you know? So I, that's that was my main issue. Was I wasn't laying down a grid. And once I had this grid, um, just kind of follow it for everything. Every character, every female, male, doesn't matter, as long as you, you had to lay down that grid. And that, that was my biggest issue. Do you think someone with an abstract or impressionistic style can work in comics? I think it's it's possible. We draw in this style, this pattern. Um, it's basically because there's an audience for this, this style, this pattern, the, these people. You know, people want to see this style. So we draw in this style and it makes it easy for us because it's like a, a secondhand formula that we don't really have to think about it, we just go. But if you look at comics, you're basically just telling us a, a story using a visual medium, and so so who who's to say what that vi that visual medium could be? It could be pretty much anything. 
you know, any style, any direction you want it, you want to be, you want it. So if you feel like a, a specific art style fits the, the, the story and the, the characters and the vision that's in your head, go with it. How often do you draw on a different style from what people know you for? Um, I, yeah, there's a couple things that I'm, I'm working on right now that's a little bit different. Like, I'll, I'll use Brothers Bond as an example, okay? I specifically drew that book out as in more like a, a an animated cartoon style. And I'm not an animated cartoon style, style of artist. I had to learn to draw like that. This, what you guys are looking at when I'm draw, drawing Lobo here, this is, this is more of my home style. I'm more comfortable doing this. I, I feel it more. I can do this in my sleep. You know, it's pretty easy for me. But when I start, when I had to switch over to do this animated style, it took me a while to figure it out. But I, I'm not, I'm the type of artist that I'm not afraid to try something new. If I, if I, there's a brand new style that's out there that I've never seen or, or I'm like, oh, I, I, I can never draw like that. Why not? Try it. See, see what happens. Now, you remember I said I have a, I have a, like a painter style? This is it. Yeah. This is, like, I'm not, I'm not caring about where certain lines go. I'm just going. I'm just trying to capture a shape. And, and I know it's a silhouette, so I'm just going to just go for it. So, you know. Whenever it comes out of it, it comes out of it. And some sometimes my mistakes turn turns out great. I'm like, oh cool. I wasn't planning for this, but it's here and it looks great. Yeah. What's the craziest deadline you had to deal with? My editor sent me three scripts. I started drawing issue one. I'm like, oh great, I'm drawing issue one. I drew issue two. Great, issue two. I was like, let me get started on issue three. And I was as I'm getting ready to start issue three. My editor calls me up and then he said, um, hey, uh, where's issue two? I said, I just finished issue two. I just sent it to you. I don't know what's going on. And he was like, no, that was issue three. You need to draw. You need to send me issue two. And I was like, what? <laughs> I told my editor, I will have issue two done by the end of the week. And he, I got off the phone with him. Then I call in the Calvary. So uh, I call in Dan Norton and Javon, and Javon Kirby. Everybody knows him as JJ J. Kirby, right? So I call them in. They came to my house and they spent the entire week at my house. They slept there, they ate lunch, dinner, everything. They just crashed on my couch. They didn't leave for a week. At that time, I was already draw. I was all. I was working at a at a video game company during the day where I was doing concept art. I was doing my day job, and then I would come home and draw Star Wars from like seven at night to like four in the morning. And I would just get about two hours of sleep, two maybe three hours of sleep, get up, go back to work, come back home, and draw. So what I would do, I would draw the, the page to a certain stage and then Dan and, um, um, and, and JJ, they would come in, they would help me with the backgrounds. So they kind of knocked out a lot of the background stuff because there were a lot of vehicles that was, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the Millennium Falcon and all that stuff. I built the Millennium Falcon in 3D and I used, I rendered out the, the, the images of the, the, the Millennium Falcon with, uh, with an outline. Like I, I, with, I just rendered out the line parts of, of this so um so it looked like it, it was art artwork so i just slapped those in there we finished an entire book in five days all right I, okay so you guys can see i'm flipping my art i love flipping my art around um because my I'm right-handed and I don't want to smudge and I, I just like to move my, my page around when I'm inking. So I'll straighten it off in a minute so you guys can see. I'm just want to get some some chain or chain-ish. It's a white acrylic pen, okay? And and I just use it for highlights, you know, like a lot of these lines here. I'll come back and I'll beef up certain things like this. Like I'll come back, I'll throw some, some backlighting in certain areas like this. I'm in my, 
I'm in my touchdown phase. I'm going to add some white. And so this is where I, I switch into, uh, I switch back. I'm switching constantly back into just inking and painting, inking and painting. So this is my painting mode. So usually I grab a bunch of these before. These white inks right here is pretty, they're really cool. I really like them because they they dry pretty fast. I use it with a paint paintbrush, and you can get like see this dry this dry brush effect like this. And then another thing I like to do too is um I sometimes I'll grab where is this? Just gonna grab this pen. I hope I have enough ink in this one to see. Yeah, I do. So I'll grab something like this. Oops, and I just splatter it a little bit. Get a little bit of splitter splatter. It just adds a little bit more oomph to it. Sometimes I'll use like a credit card. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of ink on the edge of the schedule's card. And I'm just gonna the splash it. will give a little bit more splash to it. So it just gives it a little bit more oomph to it, a little more atmosphere. And then sometimes I'll even go back with my finger and I'll just smudge some, some of the white a little bit. It really depends. So I'll get some white and I'll just go over the entire thing like this. Just kind of add little, little hatch marks like that. Close place. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. If you're interested in learning from Ryan, check out comicsprobootcamp.com. It's an in-person workshop that he hosts with Alex Sinclair, Will Spartaccio, and Carlos DeAnda. Also keep an eye out on Ryan's Proco.com page. He's going to be uploading some premium lessons on there if you want to dive deeper into the subjects he talked about in the video.